Hello, everybody, and welcome to Law Bite number 118, dated November 29th, 2020. I'm Walter, your mobile historian and blue collar scholar. This Law Bite is entitled The 11th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Now, let's face it, the 11th Amendment is one of the lesser known uh, amendments to the Constitution. You hardly ever hear about it, okay? Most people don't even know that it exists. Okay? It's not something you hear mentioned on TV, on the radio, podcast, and certainly not in casual conversation in a coffee shop. Okay, The 11th Amendment is primarily known uh, to lawyers and others uh, very interested in litigation. Okay, Specifically, what it does is prohibit certain types of lawsuits against U.S. states in federal court. All right. The amendment initially forbade citizens of one state from suing another state in federal court. It also prohibited lawsuits against U.S. states in federal court by the citizens or subjects of a foreign country. All right. Currently, the amendment has been interpreted uh, under certain conditions. Of course, there are always conditions and exceptions. The amendment has inter been interpreted to prohibit lawsuits against U.S. states, not only from the citizens of another state, but also preventing a lawsuit against a state by its own citizens in federal court under certain circumstances as well as prohibiting lawsuits against U.S. states in federal court by a foreign country. Okay? So, let me read to you the text of the 11th Amendment, which was proposed by the Congress in March of 1794 and ratified by the requisite amount of states in February of 1795. All right? The 11th Amendment reads as follows. The judicial power of the United States shall not be construed to extend to any suit in law or equity commenced or prosecuted against one of the United States by citizens of another state or by citizens or subjects of any foreign state. If that sounds confusing, then you're probably not used to reading the common sentence structure from the 1790s. Essentially, the 11th Amendment is saying, if we translate it into modern phraseology, okay, that the courts of the United States all right, cannot hear any cases in law and equity okay, prosecuted or commenced or pursued against a U.S. state by the citizens of another U.S. state or by the citizens or subjects of another country. All right. And the 11th Amendment as such thus stands as a barrier. All right. Against, at least in modern circumstances, most typically individuals taking states to federal court. Uh, for monetary damages or equitable relief without their consent. The 11th Amendment embraces the concept of sovereign immunity, a.k.a. the king can do no wrong. That's from what it's based upon. Sovereign immunity is, of course, a concept which protects governmental entities from lawsuits without their consent. All right? So, the... 11th Amendment to the Constitution was adopted, all right, as a response to the Supreme Court's decision in Chisholm versus Georgia in 1793. That decision essentially held that an individual in one state, okay, in this case, South Carolina, could sue another U.S. state, Georgia, in federal court, and that states did not enjoy such sovereign immunity in Federal court, all right? Uh, essentially, there was nothing standing in the way from Chisholm versus Georgia of one citizen of one state taking 
a state to court in federal court. So the 11th Amendment was essentially a reaction to that decision. All right. And it was the First Amendment obviously adopted to uh, to the U.S. Constitution after. All right. The Bill of Rights Amendments, numbers one through ten. All right. So. The 11th Amendment can often be problematic uh, when trying to take a state uh, into court, into the federal judiciary, all right, for damages and other things. Uh, but like any provision of the Constitution, the 11th Amendment is not in any way, shape, or form absolute, folks. But before I get into the exemptions, I just want to mention uh, some more history with respect to the amendment. Um, in 1890, the Supreme Court, all right, in clear uh, contrast to the text of the 11th Amendment, which previously had only prohibited lawsuits uh, by citizens of one state against another state, the Supreme Court extended the protection of the 11th Amendment to include uh, citizens taking their own state to court in federal court, all right? So the Supreme Court expanded the 11th Amendment's sovereign immunity protection, all right? And uh, also in the case of Hollingsworth versus Virginia, which was in 1798, all right, the Supreme Court effectively held that virtually all pending actions that had been brought as a result of the Chisholm versus Georgia decision had to be dismissed because the 11th Amendment had been adopted. All right. So back to exceptions. All right. The 11th Amendment has numerous exceptions. All right. And basically, in these cases, the amendment effectively does not exist. First and foremost, a state may always waive its sovereign immunity and consent to being sued. That is always an option. Any right that you have can be waived. And this situation is no different than any other. State can always waive its sovereign immunity and consent to being sued in federal court. All right. Next. All right. The Supreme Court has held by the case of Fitzpatrick versus Bitzer that Congress can abrogate state sovereign immunity via Section 5 of the 14th Amendment. OK, to enforce the 14th Amendment quite often one will have to sue the state, all right? And therefore, Congress can abrogate that state immunity via uh, Section 5 of the 14th Amendment, all right? Additionally, they held in the case of Ex parte Young in 1908 that, all right, state actors may not specifically be protected by the uh, language of that amendment. After all, a state actor is... While, of course, employed by the state, the state actor is some ways acting in their own independent capacity and therefore can, all right, be held accountable by the federal courts, not in any way violating the 11th Amendment. Additionally, the court uh, has ruled in the case of Central Virginia Community College uh, versus Katz in, in 2006, pardon me, that uh, the Constitution, all right, essentially uh, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 4, uh, abrogated any form of state immunity with respect to bankruptcy cases, all right, where they may happen to be involved in a bankruptcy suit. Um, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 4 of the Constitution throws that uh, sovereign immunity out of the window. All right. Last but not least, OK, when a state elects to uh, remove uh, a case from state court to federal court. All right. It automatically waives its 11th Amendment protection that was decided by the Supreme Court in uh, Lapides versus Board of Regents of the University System of Georgia in 2002. All right. So that's the summation of the 11th Amendment. And once again, uh, the sum of it all is that in certain circumstances, okay, 
individuals are prohibited from taking states to court in federal court for monetary damages in equitable relief without the consent of the state itself. All right. The amendment originally just merely prohibited uh, the citizen of one state from taking another state to court in federal court for those situations that I just mentioned, monetary damages or equitable relief. And it also originally just prohibited the citizens of another country or subjects of a foreign country from doing the same, taking the U.S. state into federal court for those purposes. However, in uh, uh, 1890, the amendment was expanded to include uh, a citizen of a U.S. state taking their own state to court in federal court for those purposes. All right. As well as in 1934, it was extended, okay, to uh, protect a state from being taken to court in federal court by a foreign country, okay? The two cases that were responsible for this expansion first were Hans versus Louisiana in 1890 and Monaco versus Mississippi in 1934. You can check those uh, cases out. All right. So the 11th Amendment, like I said, is very technical and procedural amendment to the Constitution. And of course, as with all amendments, it has its exceptions. All right. Situations where it does not apply. Once again, real quick. Uh, first and foremost, the state can waive its immunity. All right. Congress can abrogate that immunity under Section 5 of the 14th Amendment. Uh, local governments may not be protected by that immunity, depending on how much uh, state control of uh, the state, how much control the state has over that local government. All right. Typically, state actors may not be protected by that amendment. OK. Uh, in bankruptcy matters, the amendment may not apply with respect to the state. And if a state removes a case from state court to federal court, the amendment does not apply. All right. So there are several situations I've mentioned where the 11th Amendment is not applicable or it is just outright waived or that immunity is abrogated by the Congress. In any case, the 11th Amendment does not protect the state. All right. With respect to those exceptions to its terms. All right. Remember, nothing is absolute uh, in the Constitution. There are always ways around it. All right. So thanks so much for listening. Any questions or controversies, please leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer them. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would graciously appreciate it if you did so. Just hit that little red subscribe button and we are in business. I appreciate you so much for listening to this video. Take care, stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you at the next Law Bite. Peace.